Hi, I'm Todd Jones, host of the podcast Press Box Access. Here's a clip from my interview with Alexander Wolf. Alex recalls covering the Wild West days of college basketball when cheating was just part of the game. There was plenty of scoundrels throughout college sports in the other major sport that you covered, college basketball. You know, today it's the NIL and it's all out there on the table. Or, you know, they're gladly telling you that the quarterback has a Porsche and this guy's making that much money. And, you know, but the thing is, they were getting cars and money back in the day, too. <laughs> Yeah, you, the just difference, didn't, you just had to root it out, you know. The difference you know, was, is that, that the Porsche dealer didn't want his name associated with it back in the day. And now right. he's very proud to say that he's responsible for the Porsche. Well, my career started in the late 80s, like I said, and started with college basketball. And you wrote a book in 1990 called Raw Recruits. I have it right here. And the reason I have it is because I st- this is an original copy, Alex. I have Pardon. yellow highlighted sections in it. I treated this like a textbook. I was doing my homework to cover college basketball because this book was so great. It dove into the the underbelly of college basketball. And um, what was it like to report on that book? You know, back in the day of the Wild West, what sticks out in your mind about those years of digging around and what was going on under the surface of college basketball? Oh, the things I remember from that era and working on that book with Armin Katayan, by the way. Um, right, right. You know, Armin really was the reporter on it, and I tried to stitch it together. And I remember coaches, assistant coaches, really wanted to talk about what was going on. They weren't going to go on the record. They weren't going to name names necessarily. Um, but they wanted to talk. And I don't know, again, if it was therapy or they really wanted to see some structural change come come to the sport. Um mm-hmm. I remember particularly uh, Judd Heathcote, coach at Michigan State, Michigan who was State, then right. president of the NABC. Um, he considered it what was going on in the sport to be directly the result of all the TV money flowing into it. And he was really upset that the money was being parceled out according to how far you went in the tournament. The more games you won, the more that school was going to collect. Which Yeah, is there was an incentive out. to cheat, right? Total incentive to cheat. Right. And and he he said, we, the coaches, don't want that. It's making our lives miserable. It means that our boss, our AD, is going to be that much angrier if we don't make the tournament and we're going to get fired sooner. And I look at my assistants and I I can't do anything but say, I need you to get me players. What kind of a signal is that? You know, at all costs. And uh, it's so much fun, by the way, to listen to some of the pods that you've done with some of these old SEC writers like Ron Higgins and <laughs> Jerry Tipton because these guys back in the 80s were, they were covering a lot of these same things and had a mm-hmm. real sense of, of the texture of it all. Um, right. So I think that was one of the things. When, we, when Armin and I attacked Raw Recruits, we'd done a lot of reporting for the magazine, some of which hadn't made it into the magazine for legal reasons or whatever, and it frustrated us. So we wanted to, to do a book-length project where we could kind of get our yayas out a little. And, um, but we wanted to, to paint that picture of kind of what the system was like. And if we were pointing fingers, it was more to indict the whole system. Mm-hmm. And truth be told, there was a, a book maybe 15 years before ours by a guy named Len Shapiro at the Washington Post um, called Athletes for Sale. Right. And then about 12 or 15 years after our book, um, Wetzel and Jaeger did a book called uh, Soul Influence, right. which was basically, it, you can write the same book every 12 to 15 years, but just <laughs> interchange the names. You know, now it was sneaker money and then it was something else. And um, I guess when I look at the college landscape today and I see NIL, um, just like maybe Judd Heathcote in his dotage, is probably thinking, you know, that's an improvement because the system has been tweaked and has taken some of this hypocrisy out. And those of us like you and me who love hoop, we don't have to do the Runyon-esque, you know, satchels of cash thing on the side. Now, when you got a Tark telling you, I like transfers because their cars are already paid for, <laughs> you know, then you, you kind of like the Runyon-esque because the characters and the rogues and all that is great copy. But right. um, <laughs> I, I, I did love toggling between the pros and the colleges because you go to the pros and it was just X's and O's. It was right. Basketball. You know, just basketball. basketball. Yeah. And right. basketball is Lord knows it's it's neat enough all on its own uh, to keep me anyway entertained and there are great stories in it. Um, but that was one project that Armin and I decided, you know, we're we're just going to see what we can find under the hood here. And it 
Well, you found a lot under the hood of Kentucky. The, I, was a stu- I was a senior in 1988, graduating, and this book has a lot about what happened at the University of Kentucky at that time with this big scandal about money being sent out to the family in L.A. And, and I remember in the spring when that story broke in the Los Angeles Daily News about Claude Mills, Chris Mills, the player, his father had money sent to him and it popped open. That day the story broke. I was at the University of Kentucky's practice gym, Memorial Coliseum. Eddie Sutton was in the, his office. To, to, he was going to put a statement out, right, about the initial story. And me and Mike Embury from uh, Associated Press and Brian Malloy from UPI were standing out in the hallway. And I know the Harold Lear guys were coming over because I used to work there. And anyway, Eddie's back there with this booster who has a giant tall cow- cowboy hat on. And at one point, Eddie comes out to use the restroom. And when he comes back, he says to the three of us, do any of you guys have a dictionary? I need to look up the word absolve. <laughs> yeah, <it's- laughs> so I knew right then that <laughs> raw recruits, when it came out, I was looking. I'm like, oh, this has got some good juicy stuff in it because I was there as a young kid. In the heat of it, thinking, "Wow, this is this is college sports, huh?" Well, and I, you know, I, I mentioned a moment ago how it wasn't about pointing fingers at people so much as indicting the whole system by laying it out. And to this day, I do not believe that Dwayne Casey put the money in that envelope. Really, I, I do not believe he did, and I, I think that's colored my um, standing on the sidelines, applauding as I've watched Dwayne really make his way in the sport as a coach. Um, right. He you was know, the assistant it, coach. He got blamed, took the fall initially. Right, yeah. right. And, and a number of bits of reporting Armin and I were able to do suggest, not, not beyond a shadow of a doubt, but suggest that, that Dwayne, you know, Dwayne may have known what was going on, but uh, he did not put the money. He wasn't orchestrating it. it.